40 and two, so 40 years, two months. Or something, right? Like yeah. that looks, it doesn't look like it's all actually all meant to be the or same. Or $40 over two months or something. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it yeah. couldn't, it, it is quite possible. And actually, we should talk about this because a lot of people reference that in yeah. the articles online. 402 months, what was she hiding from? Uh-huh. Okay, well, 402 months is a huge amount of time. Oh, right? it is. It's, uh, I, there's, I, there's actually a web page called monthstoyears.com uh-huh. where you can go and it'll convert months to years. I'm just kidding. Yeah. 33 and a half years. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. 33 and a half years. So, but it could be something as simple as she had to pay somebody 40 bucks over two months. Something as simple as that. Oh, it could you know, be. it could have just been all run together, and she wasn't using dollars. I, I mean, I'm, be, just, I'm making examples of ways yeah. to interpret this because this stuff is just so hard to figure out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but if you look at if you look at the writing too, though, the the four oh two months, it actually looks to me like a forty, and then the two is a lot smaller. The two is more more the size of the months that follow right. it, right? That's why. It, that's so it why looks like she wrote it. two months and then wrote the forty later, yeah. or the forty first and then two months later. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that, that four hundred two months really means anything. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. I, I really discount these letters because they are just so out there, and I They're almost actually, you know what? They give me like a little bit the heebie-jeebies, like as all of all of this stuff because it's so like discombobulated, and it is. So much of the handwriting is so different, you know. Like there's some of it that's very well constrained and like definitely meticulous, and then there's like the cursive down in the bottom corner, and then there's you know it's all different. It doesn't look like it comes from the same hand. Yeah, no, I, I don't. Yeah, no, so, yeah, like especially the cursive down. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. But it's just I, an interesting anomaly about this, right? Yeah. She, she had some other random stuff. She had this set of this little set of jottings here. Which are right. some columns of numbers. There's three sets of numbers in there. Each set is two columns. They appear to be on the right hand side, escalating years, starting in one column in 67, another one in 1970, another one in 1969, although this is a big assumption on my part. People have speculated that these were, this was her way of calculating her parents, or maybe Becky Sue Turner's parents' ages. But I don't see why she would be even interested in doing that. She didn't care about Becky Sue Turner's parents. As far as her own parents. She had dumped that identity, so who cares? Yeah, it might be. Maybe she had left behind two parents and a sibling, and she was trying to you know, keep track of or, or figure out how old they would be at this particular time. I don't know. I, mean, but, I, I don't know why she couldn't have used simple arithmetic. Yeah, that's exactly what Joe yeah. and I talked about earlier, Devin, is that, okay, so what is the first set of numbers in the upper left-hand side? 4890. Okay, so... We'll just say that somebody at 48 years old, the other person is 90. Simple addition, 38 and 80, 28 and 70. Like you can just Mm kind of take in simple increments. So it's really strange that it's written out in such longhand. It it could be kind of an OCD sort of thing and maybe there's no rational purpose behind it. That's true. It It is very repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it's... uh, And a lot of people, I think came up with the whole it's calculating mom and dad's ages because there are present on the page there's a there's a very clear d and there's a very clear m yeah so mom dad and so but that's uh, what the third column is for maybe that's her age i don't know it's uh you know again we're never going to know unless uh, maybe it's some sort of strange cryptogram mm. that needs to i doubt it <laughs> there's I actually you know one of the it. things that's interesting is there's a there's a theory floating out around there i know we're not at the theories yet yeah um that maybe she had been an abducted child uh-huh and that 88 is when she was released or got, whatever, away. got away or whatever and realized she had to assume a new identity. Blah, blah, blah. It's a fairly mm-hmm. far-fetched, but um, I guess you could kind of rationalize this sort of meticulous. She, it's possible that she was awful at math and couldn't actually do that arithmetic or whatever or wanted to be able to just look at every single number, you know, whatever. I, I could buy that reference. last bit better than I could say she was awful at math because she, she was that awful at math. She went How did she get her GED yeah, and a college degree? That's fair, yeah. So it's, uh, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's uh, a trick that she's using to try and calculate based on her assumed that she thinks she is age, what age is those people would be, or even to calculate backward. I mean, you know, if she was uh-huh. an abducted child and she didn't know how old she was, if she found her parents or found somebody who she had a, knew, you know, rationally, 
than she was trying to calculate her. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's really kind of strange. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she was abducted and held to the the age of eighteen, because um, unless unless her abductor actually took the time and trouble to tutor her and teach her teach her things like you know how to read and write stuff like well, that. Well, I know we're gonna talk about. Let's just let's put yeah. this. Let's off keep for going. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we're almost to the theories. We are pretty close to that. Joseph Belling, the investigator with the Social Security Administration, had reached a dead end after about two years. So he took the story to the Seattle Times and a reporter named Maureen O'Hagan wrote a really good article about it that I, I recommend. If you, I don't know if you guys read it yeah. or not, but yeah. yeah, how could you not? But that's where it all ends. It's still a mystery. I think. Well, and one of Velling's uh, motivations was to get photographs of her out there to the public. Mm-hmm. And maybe somebody would recognize her. So far, that's you know that that came out in 2013. That yeah. still hasn't happened. It's been interesting, you know. There's there's all the you read the forums and it's like everybody's kind of like, oh no, you know, yeah, this, this is the inter- this is the internet though. Somebody will come forward and identify her in no time. And you know, these are posts from like April 2013. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, in no time. This yeah, is I know, that's right. for sure. No, but it's did silly. he do? Did did we mention if he? Is running DNA or fingerprints or yeah or oh yeah he ran he all ran those DNA and stuff? fingerprints and got nothing yeah. yeah and the facial recognition didn't come back right, right, right. either sorry it might have been so. you might have said that already I was busy reading notes that's okay sorry. <laughs> yeah so so but that's not remarkable is a lot of people haven't been fingerprinted uh, although if she were if she were a criminal she would have been fingerprinted mm-hmm. if she was fleeing something huge she would have been fingerprinted. if she had been uh, she could she could have been a criminal but had, who had just not yet been arrested and booked. Yeah. You know, that's always possible. That's true. Although I don't know why changing her identity would help. So one of the things that really, really intrigues me, and this might actually be the key to unlocking the mystery, although it means um, searching through a whole lot of haystacks for a, for a small needle. Mm-hmm. But it, the question is, is how did Lori Kennedy know about Becky Sue Turner's death? How did she find out about it? Yeah. There's several different ways to do that. You know, and uh, as a little aside, you know, a lot of people are saying, wow, she must have gotten a professional I- I- identity broker or something like that in order Sad to do that this. Sad that that actually exists as a profession. Yeah, I, I, I bet it does. Yeah. I, yeah, but go ahead and try to find one. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you know where you go to find one of those guys? The thing about it is, is, is I, know how, I know how to get a fake ID set up. It's harder these days than it used to be, but I, I, I knew how to do exactly what she did and just from reading spy novels. And stuff and crime novels and stuff like that. And so it's not everybody's thinking it's like rocket science to get a new to get a new fake ID, but especially in nineteen eighty eight it no, wasn't that tough. No, but the key tough. is finding the right person's identity to assume, right? That's the key. And so uh, one way is to go through old newspapers looking at obituaries mm-hmm. and that eventually it's gonna take some time, but eventually you're gonna stumble across that one person who died at two. You know, so you're gonna get a lot of you want somebody who died in you know, was very born, young. Died very young. You want somebody who was born around the late '60s, and so eventually you're going to find somebody somewhere around your age. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And actually, this one, this is one I, um, I sent a message to uh, Maureen O'Hagan about this yesterday, and I haven't heard back. I probably never will, because I'm sure she gets inundated with crackpot messages. But um, I was thinking that she might have actually gotten that. I don't know exactly where the column came from, that, that news clipping, but the obituary probably appeared in the Seattle Times. Mm-hmm. And Seattle Times, of course, has, uh, they have archives, and I'm sure people are allowed to come in. And what my question for, for Maureen O'Hagan was, when people come in to go through the archives, do, are they required to sign in or show ID? Birth certificate, May 22nd, 1988. That, mean, that meant she would have been spending time going through newspaper archives in uh, in all the local areas so in Tacoma and Seattle I'm not sure exactly which newspaper or newspaper she was going to the archives but that's one avenue again that's a that's a that's a big haystack in fact it's just several haystacks to go through but if you're really determined to find her that's one way to do it another way you can find somebody who's a suitable identity that to, to steal is to wander through graveyards looking at gravestones yeah and also another one and I think this is a real possibility is I think she might have known the Turner family when she was a kid which, which meant she would have been living in Fife maybe she was a neighbor or maybe she was a schoolmate or playmate of one of the kids I'm guessing the, the oldest of the daughters who died was eight years old so for Becky or Becky Sue Jane Doe Lori to be old enough to remember the family and the kids all dying in a fire she would have had to have been friends with the oldest one the eight year old well I, I mean uh, no I wouldn't say that she could have been in the middle one the middle one was only three 
Oh. Yeah. But as a neighbor, mm-hmm. you don't have to be the same age as somebody to be friends and know them. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying she was precisely age. She might have been six or seven. Or okay. She might have, and she might not have even really been friends. So they might have just lived a few houses down, and when the fire went up, it was a huge tragedy that stuck in her mind, because why wouldn't it? You know, you saw these people, and now they're dead. Well, the, the one of the, the children survived, didn't they? One of the, yeah, one of the kids survived that fire. I thought they all died. One of them survived. Really? Yeah, and is accounted for, just to like, wait, no, no. I mean. I thought I thought three kids died in that fire. There were four kids. Oh, died. okay. Oh, okay. I missed that. Okay. Yeah, so well, I guess it's also possible that that person became friends with Jane Doe later, or, you know, I guess it's At also... At some point, recounted the story. Right, and I also think it's, like, h- highly possible for, if a huge tragedy happens, when you're three or four, you're gonna remember at least big parts of that, and if the time comes for you to think, oh gosh, I gotta, I gotta steal an identity, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you would you, say, oh, there was that fire, and it would be yeah, really you might be to... Cost- to yeah, you're being reminded constantly through your, like, your childhood because every time your mom catches you like like leaving the stove on yeah, or playing with matches, like you want to be like the Turner family. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so you, so it's, it's it's so I I think it's most likely that she actually lived somewhere close to the Turners and that's how she knew about it. This is and the other ones are, the other possibilities are, are strong too, but that just meant a whole hell of a lot more work for her to find the proper identity to, to assume. Well, yeah, but then I mean, then of course we have the question of like why. Of why? Yeah. Well, that is the next big, big question, uh, which is why she wanted to do this. So, right. Well, so there's a few theories here. One is that she was a spy. Uh, what? But I know, I know. She was, she was too unstable, just a little bit too loony, uh, and she really didn't do anything to get into a sensitive position where she could actually do the Russians or anybody else any good. No, she, yeah. she lived in you know, Texas and did a job, and I guess she, okay. Let's go down the spy novel route. She was a secret shopper, which means she could have been looking at stuff and doing investigation and doing all kinds of reconnaissance, but really, I don't buy that. I agree. Yeah. She, she could have been a sleeper agent, you know, she was left there to, to come up, you know, be activated at some point and go off on a killing spree, but that, they didn't find any, like, guns and knives or anything like that in her house, but just the gun she killed herself with. Right. I didn't, yeah, I didn't actually find out if it was a Soviet manufactured gun or not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> wow. Another theory that's out there that uh, a lot of people will find popular is that she was fleeing a cult, and she yeah. was like caught up in a cult, and she had to get away from them. There's also the piggybacking on that theory is that um, I guess somehow that she was traced to Idaho. Oh, yeah, she got. Somehow. Yeah, she got. Well, she was. Uh, that's where she got. That's the, where she got her, her ID card. Right. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if I went through all that stuff or not. I thought I did, but she after she got Becky Sue Turner's birth certificate. About a month or so later, she shows up in Boise, Idaho, and gets a, a, an Idaho ID card. And then, not long after that, she shows up in Dallas, Texas. And right after she gets there, she files for a legal name change. Mm-hmm. And so she changed her name legally. Right. And then she applied for a social security number. Yeah, so she was and in Idaho, and I guess there's a lot of... Um... Supremacy? Movement yeah. is probably, I think, is that where you're headed? That's not where I was headed. I was headed down the, like, Mormon rabbit hole. This is actually apparently a thing that's like happening, in Idaho, okay. or that's been happening in Idaho. That there's like a lot of like kind of almost like culty offshoots of the Mormon Church happening in Idaho. Hmm. Um, that are. Was that happening in the late '80s? Yeah, that huh? are like super cultish and like you can't get out of. And there's you know a bunch of other kind of church activities, not obviously sanctioned by the overarching church. I'm not trying to any of the churches, but mm-hmm. there are crazy people in every walk of life, and that that's apparently a fairly legitimate that, like, she grew up in that and escaped it, mm-hmm. and then found herself with no resources, and somehow, you know, maybe through the Mormon church even, because they keep really good ancestral records, found out about the Fife fire, grabbed that, just clung onto it, and took it from there. That's a fairly prevalent theory on the internet as well. That's really interesting because, you know, the other thing that I looked at is we have this, obviously we have this huge spate of time where we should, we don't just don't know who she is and where she is. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I looked up was the Rajakrishnas here in Oregon. And for anybody who doesn't know, this is a very boiled down version. Are you talking about the Rajneeshis? Rajneeshis, thank you. I... Totally, totally hack that name up. Yeah, no, the Rajneeshis. 
But the point is, they it was a religious movement. They were in Oregon for a couple of years, and then the Rajneeshi got in trouble, and they left. But they had thousands upon thousands of followers yeah. who were living on their compound. Okay, so let's say she's one of their followers. And some of their followers did get in a lot of legal trouble because they did some weird stuff. Uh, I cannot remember the name of the woman who was one of the leaders. Ma, not Sheila. Yeah, yeah. Sheila. Yeah. And she um, she poisoned people. She had she, uh, committed... She, she had contracts on people. She was off the deep end. But they, the point uh, is, is that if you were involved in the upper echelons of that, and you get out early enough before the hammer comes down, you probably... Uh, just age-wise, if that makes a whole lot of sense, but maybe. Well, they, um, they, they got... In the, all of their legal troubles mm -hmm. happened in 84 to 85. And no, they, I just mean that, like, I don't know that Jane Doe would have been old enough to have been in the upper echelons of that stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think that I, I she was 18. Yeah. She said she was 18. But she certainly wasn't older than thirty or than twenty-five. Well, I, yeah, and I don't know that age. I think your devotion got you yeah. routed oh, up yeah, more no than idea. anything I... else. But I, yeah, they, they are a whole nother story to go into. But mm -hmm. I, that's oh, one yeah. of the things I thought is, what if they were uh, part of that group? And she was like, I got to get out of here, and I never want to be associated with mm -hmm. these people again because. Holy crap! This went south. Yeah, it's fair. yeah, it did go south. Although the, the Rajneeshis didn't give me the impression of being the kind of culty kind of people that would actually track down a deserter and kill them. They weren't really like that. Uh, but they I did mean, they a were... lot of things that got a lot of people in legal trouble. And oh, if yeah. you realize that trouble's coming down the bend, you might just want to step to the side and completely disappear from it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but uh, and Mon 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 Sheila, by the way, she she engineered the first biological attack mm -hmm. on U.S. soil. She did, yeah, they they did all sorts of incredible stuff. Incredible, <laughs> incredible, incredibly Not, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I think that that's it's a fair point that it's totally possible that. She had either been born into, got mixed up in some kind of cult or crazy movement, realized that there was some trouble involved, and, mm -hmm. and also she was pretty unbalanced, and not to say that people in that sort of situation are unbalanced, but... Well, obviously it put more stress on a person who was already like a little, a little bit sort of teetering on the edge. Mm -hmm. so, She's, uh, I mean, but the thing about it is if, you, if you're fleeing, say, abuse, or if you're fleeing a cult, and you've got this nice, warm family of in-laws who are asking you about your past. Why don't you just say, "Look, I, I, I got him mixed up with this cult, and I had to, I, I had to like get out with my life, and I changed my name, and I came here and started a new life." And so, you know, why not just tell them that? Shame. Yeah, I guess maybe she's embarrassed. Shame is a very easy embarrassed answer. about yeah, but at the same time, again, this is the thing about her that was a little perverse, in my opinion, is that she. Uh, really wanted to preserve her secret, her secret past, or, and everything. And it, she really should have just sat down and come up with a biography for herself, because she brought more suspicion upon herself by refusing to talk about anything than she would have if she just said, you know, you pick a, you pick a large city like Los Angeles, where you know you say I'm from Los Angeles, and she says, oh, do you know John Doe? And then you say, no, nope, LA is a big place. You don't want to pick a little small town, in other words. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you just go with that and just build yourself a false biography and, and, and go with that. I don't know why she didn't do that. She I guess. All this trouble. So what do you think? I also do just want to point out not to say anything bad against the roughs because I don't know them. But I do want to point out that it's pretty much them saying we were really nice to her. We mm -hmm. were welcoming and wonderful and non-judgmental and just opened up our arms and she was just a crazy person. Yeah, I suppose you're making a good point. You know, there, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to say that they're not lovely people because they probably are, but there's also there's so many weird nuances with family that like it is possible that maybe they thought they were being nice and warm and welcoming and really she was truly interpreting it as they were being awful or yeah. they were nice and warm and welcoming if she were like a perfect Christian woman from the perfect background and otherwise you know they would not you know I, I just do want to go ahead and say just for the record that not to say that they are not but we are kind of just they may be the them. Spanish Inquisition and not realize yeah. they're yeah. being the Spanish Inquisition. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, yeah, they, exactly. maybe they do and they're happy to do so. That's, that's, that's a good point, though. We don't yeah. have Lori's side of the story on the no. family relationship, do we? Nor do we have, I don't think I've heard anybody, like any like family friends or anything come up. It's all like the family specifically. Mm -hmm.
And yeah. part of that might be that she just sequestered herself mm -hmm. so much away from them that nobody knew. But, yeah. Joe, what, uh, there, there's also this thing about her being... Oh gosh, uh, what's it, this woman's name that they think she might have been? Jennifer. Jennifer. Um, Wicker? Jennifer Wicker. Yeah, yeah Wicker is 